Wait, let's start recording. Okay, let's get started. <laughs> uh oh. Okay, guys. Um, welcome today. It was supposed to be a TensorFlow workshop for Hiro, but instead we decided quickly that we'll do a special project workshop today uh, and put it under a Let's Talk event. Uh, it's going to be fun, uh, an interesting workshop. We're going to learn a lot for from our experiences. Uh, as, as I always, okay, so let's just go next to next slide. So I'm your host today. I'm Bharatwaj. Uh, that's my Discord handle over there. Uh, feel free to um, text me about anything AI. Um, I'll be happy to talk about it. And yeah, I'm the uh, I'm also the SIG AI co-SIG AI lead uh, with Hiro, of course. And here's Hiro. I'm Hiro. I'm the SIG AI co-lead with Bararwash, and I'm the vice president of ACM. That's my Discord. Uh, message me anything about data science. That's all I'm about. And yeah. Nice, cool. Thank you so much, Hiro. So um, for guys who are new here, uh, what is SIG AI Let's Talk? Uh, so SIG AI Let's Talk is basically a place to learn something new. Uh, it's a place to throw away your fear of speaking and, and like just to speak out. And, and it's also a place for discussion. So uh, feel free to like ask questions in the chat. Um, it, 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 there are no dumb questions uh, and we are all here to learn. Uh, and today, the reason we called it special uh, is because Hiro and I uh, are going to talk about our hackathon projects, which we both worked on uh, machine learning and AI projects, so which both secured awards. So we're really happy to say that. Uh, yeah, so let's just get started. We want to like uh, share our experiences on how we built our models and how, how we went about um, the machine learning route and what we actually did and what we used. So uh, this can be so, sort of like a teaser for you guys uh, to like like a pinch to start getting you guys knowing on how much there is that uh, you guys can learn, you know? So yeah, I think you guys, uh, yeah, I think we should get started. So uh, Hiro first is gonna talk about the UC Merced basketball analysis. So take it away, Hiro. Stop sharing yeah, my screen uh... if that is okay. Yeah, I'm not sure my screen right now. Where is it at? Jupiter Lab, right here. Can you guys see this? Yeah, is that cool? Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Let me put the chat on the side. Yeah, so for the for Hackmer said, I actually participated, and I did the, I won the UC Merced related hack. Uh, and my project was about the UC Merced basketball team. I just wanted to analyze and visualize the data. And this is, I'm gonna show you all my code and my, basically my notebook here. So, and tell you what I did. So first, let me just go UC Merced basketball. 21, I think it's this website that I use. Nope. Stats. I think that should work. Yeah, so maybe this one. Might be that one. Or just imagine, there you go. So I got a bunch of data from the UC Merced's basketball men's and women's team. And I got this data specifically for each player out there, right? And um, yeah, I web scrapped it. And I got it from since we started the basketball team, which is around like 2011. And yeah, I just visualized it. I grabbed it from here. So I'll show you how I web scrapped it. I imported some libraries, right? And then what did I use? Matplotlib, request, math, pandas, and I use series and data frame. Pandas again, yeah, NumPy. And some of, the, some of the libraries I don't think I used. Uh, no, I did use Peter Soup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did, yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe I didn't use one of these ones, but uh, mm -hmm. I just put it in there just in case if I needed them. And kind of, oh, let me move this, take this out right here so you all can watch the whole thing. 
So let me just go through information about functions. I had two functions, one called individual stats box one, because I have, and basically I grab this stats from box one. I call it box one. And right here, I call it box two. And then, yeah, and I just, I made a function that takes the URL, right? And over here, we requested, uh, I use Beautiful Soup to change it up so it looks prettier. That's basically what it does, it just makes the HTML look pretty. Then I made it so they find the, the table, it calls stats table, BB individual stats. Uh, if you actually go to the, if you view uh, inspect element, if you actually inspect the element, um, you'll see that you can get each each uh, box, like one box is separated from the other one. And that's how I looked at it, right? So if you just like mess around here, it'll essentially like, like just glow, just like all the ones that have the data. And they're, they're nicely, uh, they're nicely separated. There you go. Nope, nope. I'm almost there. There you go. That's the data that I wanted. So I made it so it finds this one, this uh, this table only, right? For each URL that I give. So, so this is for oh, this is from one URL. But if you change this, I think it was this one to like let's say, let's say eleven. It will go to another the uh, what's this 2013, 2014 season of the basketball team, right? So that's why I just I just kind of figured that out. It's kind of just messed around with the with the URL, and you see these different players, obviously, because they some of them already graduated, and yeah, and they all follow the same format. So my function will work for all the URLs that you put in from the UCMC Basketball website, and <clears throat> I just grab all the columns from box one because I already have it right here, nicely put for you. And uh, an index from zero to the length of the player stars HTML, which is this, right? So basically saying, give me like this many rows, this many rows, right? But since, you know, it changes every year, then, or not every year, maybe one, one year has like one less than the other one. I just made it so that it stays consistent with the, the length, right? From there, I just created a data frame. Uh, TDS for player, um, that's another, uh, I'm not really sure what, it, what they're called exactly. I don't know the the right, what do they call it? The right words for this, but there's TD, TDS everywhere here. I don't know if I can find it right now, but some, type of HTML like separated or something like that. That right here, you see this? So I grab each TDS from the thing, from the table, from each row. So each row has a certain amount. And I just grab each one of them and I put it into my data frame. So you can see this one gives me the name, this one gives me the points or the minutes or whatever, right? So I basically just made an array with all of them, right? I made a bunch of other arrays. From there, I just, I was like, okay, the first, uh, the first row and the first element, that's the, that's the player's number. The second one is the names. The third one is this one. The, the, the fourth one is this one. And then the fifth one is actually just a white space. So just ignore that one and so on. I just basically populated some stuff here. I, I cleaned it up because in the data that they give us, it has this little dash or whatever. So it kind of just, I, I was basically say, basically say just ignore it and that's it, right? And yeah, there's some other stuff like the percentage sign, I don't want that. 
and I just say ignore it, split it, take it out, made it into its own array. And then <clears throat> from our original, uh, the data frame that I created over here, the one I actually want to like return from my function, I would like just populate the, the column. Like I could have done it, I think I could have done it cleaner, but since it wasn't a hackathon, I, uh, I just did it this way because this way is the first thing that makes sense to me. So yeah, and at the end I just returned the, returned the data frame that I created. Same thing for the second one, just different columns, right? Because this one has uh, three point percentages and stuff like that and minutes. This one, so this one has blocks, success, uh, timeouts, I guess, stuff like that, right? And yeah, that's how I, <clears throat> web scrap my data here is where I call the the I call the the function right I just give it URL and the only thing that changes is this number right again I could have done it cleaner maybe with a for loop or something but this is the thing that makes sense to me so I was like okay you know what <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna work. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's what you have very less time in hackathon, so it's yeah, works. yeah. <laughs> and I got I grabbed the women's uh, basketball uh, the stats, and uh, same thing, same format. They actually is super nice to grab it, just two functions and that's it, right? And then from there I combine them into one, because so the the boxes share the same name, share the same game uh, games played, game started. Right, they share those. So I, I wasn't gonna have two tables with the same fucking, the same information. So uh, yeah, so I just come, I just merged them together. What you say, pandas. From there, I um, I checked the data types and I changed them because their input it has text, like strings, but I want them in as numbers so I can like actually actually like sum them together. So I just change into floats and some change into ints. The ones that are supposed to be ints and the other ones are supposed to be floats because yeah, there's no 1.5 games. It's just one or two, right? Uh, then same for the woman's. And then I move everything to a CSV file. Um, yeah, and then for some reason I check the columns at the end. But mm -hmm. after that, uh, I got this, just a nice, simple csv file with all the data clean so clean yeah so th this is basically how you guys have to web scrape so if like this is how we usually get data when uh you work with machine learning models so because machine learning models re require a lot of data from how we learned from the past uh sig ai uh, let's talk events so uh, data is not that available uh, openly. Uh, it's not it's not ready to use, obviously. So uh, that's why web scraping is a really important tool uh, to scrape the data and especially make it into CSV files here that are easy to work with. So yeah, see what Honestly. you did after this. Yeah, cleaning your data, making it tidy mm -hmm. is actually like maybe like 60 to 80% of the whole yep. work that you're going to be doing. Anything else is like, you know, just messing around with it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, because, you know, people put in like a text files, put ins as floats or something like that. Or like sometimes they don't even put like what you ask them for. Like mm -hmm. maybe they ask for your name, they, they put like something else, you know. So like, you know, it's human error and that happens mm -hmm. and you got to clean it up so you can actually use it. So, yeah, uh, like I said, it's a really, really nice uh, data set and I uh, can actually show. I have all the women's basketball right here, all the tables, and I have a folder with all the men's. So I'm gonna show the individual size visualization. So this is how I'm, I'm explaining my, my notebook. For people that don't know basketball, here's the explanation for all the columns that I have. Basically just saying, hey, if you don't know what TO is uh, turnovers. If you don't know what GP is, games play, just be, just to make sure that they understand what I'm writing. Because I was thinking TO was timeouts, but I was like, that makes no sense. Why would a player call a timeout? And then I, I was like, oh yeah, it's turnovers. I just like, 
thought about that, right? And then I just call my libraries right here, NumPy, Pandas, Daytime, Seaborn, Plotly, which I used. I uh, call my data sets. I read all of them, read uh, CSV, right? I called it, it's a, it's a raw, what's it called? It's a raw URL or something like, a raw link or whatever. Because if you don't put this, it doesn't work for me. So it might work for you, but if you put an R, maybe just put an R and I'll fix everything, right? I call it for the man stats. Here it is here. I just call the one of them. Here's for all the women's. Here it is. Then I made some functions, which I'll show what they do later. But basically, one makes a, a pie chart for the points for all the for any team. One makes an efficiency field goal bar, bar graph. And I just basically, this is just to make it pretty. It calls in these two columns from the data sets and an efficiency three field goal bar graph. That's basically what it is. And this is how I made it pretty, right? And here's what they do. And it's all interactive using a pie plot, right? You can see that Aki Chambers was like the MVP making 30% of the points throughout the year. That's actually pretty cool, right? And you see like maybe these players were like bench players or they were just not as good as them, you know? But uh, yeah, this is pretty cool. And uh, here's the efficiency, right? The the darker it is or like the, the more blue it is, is the less efficient. Well, the more yellow it is, it's the most efficient, right? And you can see Aki Chambers was 43% efficient uh, with uh, field, field goals attempted, 356, and field goals made with 153, right? And you can see that this guy right here, I don't think he played. Maybe he did, but it's too small to like actually see, right? So, so yeah, it's all interactive. And then this one is the efficient three-point field goal percentage. Uh, you call it by, again, put in the columns that you want. And yeah, you you see that he made 31 at three points, right? But he only, he attempted 90, 90, 97, right? This guy attempted more, but had the same amount of mate. Just one less than him, right? You can see this guy probably didn't attempt anything, mm -hmm. but yeah, it's just interactive. Uh, you can, I, I, if I had more time, actually, I would have just maybe made a website and just put that thing in because it's already ready to put in there. But uh, yeah, um, yeah, this is my project for the hackathon. That's how I won. Wow, uh, yeah. it's really amazing, dude. Really amazing. See, uh, yeah, this. yeah, and 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 anyone who's really um, who wants to learn more about the project and uh, who wants to go deeper in the functions? I know that uh, Hiro just kind of like went over uh, went over it really quickly. But if you would like to go over the functions, like feel free to like uh, text uh, Hiro on Discord. I think I'm sure he'll be happy to um, go over it. Yeah, it just meshes me and uh, yeah. If you like basketball, I like basketball. We can even work on it if you want. Yeah, cool. Yeah, thank you so much, Hiro. So sure. Uh, now we will be moving on to the next machine learning project, which uh, me and my team worked on. I uh, worked on a team of four, which um, is a fake news detector. Uh, so um, one of my teammates is here, uh, Rohit. Yeah, what's up? Yeah. Hey, uh, okay, so I'll, I'll briefly go over um, the whole project and you guys can see, oh, interesting. Yeah, you guys can see how, uh, I, I, I can um, show you guys how we did it. So, ooh, spoilers, so sorry. Okay, so basically uh, what, 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 it, what I did uh, or what, what, uh, what, or what our team did was, um, we actually built a machine learning model uh, to predict if a news is fake or not. So I'd actually like to uh, show our pitch to you guys. 
uh, just, just a three minute video, uh, which we posted on uh, on DevPost, which I think would give you guys a really good um, idea on how we actually um, did the project. So I'll just share screen, I mean, uh, share sound and yeah. I also linked it in the description so you guys can check it out. So yeah. So our project is fake news detection using machine learning. So cybersecurity is essential in, in everyone's life, and this is how we find it. The practice of ensuring confidentiality, integrity, and availability of information. This is also the, def the definition that the CISA uses. Recommendations are really bad, especially the ones made from AI, and we'll tell you why. So 4.67 billion users are connected. That's about 60% of the world's population. There are 4 billion smartphones that all have a 24-7 connection. And there are 3.8 billion people that have social media. It's not about speed of in light. It's about speed of information. And here's a chart between the social media, how, how addicting they are and how boring they are. And you can see it with LinkedIn, Instagram, Reddit, and et cetera. Cool. So I, I, I previously said that suggestions are really bad. And this is why. Suggestions lead to targeted news, but targeted news can lead to heavy manipulation. For example, the 2016 US elections. This manipulation can be used as a weapon by third party countries to change people's minds, which can even result in war. So what can we do about this? Here's our project. We created a fake news detector. We built this. We built and trained the machine learning model from scratch. We used natural language processing and our own data sources, which are over uh, 65,000, which have over 65,000 rows. We used two data, data frames, one from the University of Victoria and one from Kaggle. And we designed this application for consumers. And we just launched a prototype uh, in Figma uh, which shows the design that we will do in the future with more time. So this is a dream team. We have Karthik Narakumar, Barla Sintan Narayana, me, Rod Vamuri, and Nato Sheik, who are all third years. Yep, and we are a four people team. How it works, three simple steps. So step one, uh, user enters the URL of the website, of a site, and that needs to be verified. Step two, the website will be scrapped and the information will be covered into a test file, converted into a test file. Step three, we use our robust self-trained model to predict if the news is fake or not. And as you can see from the images over here. Mm -hmm. Oh, these are our results. So yeah, you have a multinomial naive based algorithm and you have the passive aggressive class for algorithm. We usually call the, re the recall score and the accuracy score are pretty similar, uh, about 84, 85% each uh, respectively. And here are the confusion matrices for both uh, the multinomial naive base algorithm and the passive aggressive class for algorithm. And now let's go for the demo. Okay, so I'd like to show you guys the demo and um, well, actually uh, showing it to you here. Uh, so I also wanna go over it a little more uh, than what the video was talking about. So, um, I, oh, do I have a question? Hmm. <laughs> no problem, Nathan. Okay, so basically, uh, this is our code. Um, if you guys haven't heard of Jovian, I really recommend Jovian. Oh, uh, I'm so sorry. Uh, just one second, guys. Okay, yeah, we're back. Okay, so yeah. Jovian is basically um, a really good uh, way to store your Jupyter notebooks. If you work on Jupyter notebooks, I'll show you how to commit your stuff to Jupyter notebook. Uh, commit your Jupyter notebooks on Jovian, uh, and it's really simple. You can just uh, share the link and um, put it on your LinkedIn or whatever you like. So um, re I really recommend Jovian. So basically, as you heard from the uh, power uh, from the video that I showed you, we basically um, detect fake news uh, by sending a URL uh, to our um, mach uh, machine learning model or function, which I'm gonna show you. Uh, what it does is it takes only the title and text and it's able to detect if a given news is fake or not. So this is how we did it. Uh, we, we basically 
Okay, so these these are uh, really small um, imports, like in general imports. I'll go into detail about uh, these uh, later on. Um, it's not so necessary for us to go over it now. This is a confusion matrix. Uh, this is just a function uh, to beautify the confusion matrix to make it look good. But yeah, this is this is also something that we don't need to go, um, go over now. And this is also the output function. These are all help, these are all helper functions basically. Um, so yeah, first first off in machine learning, whenever we need to um, even I mean when we start thinking about machine learning, we need data, right? So to get the data, as we learned from Hiro, uh, from Hiro's um, uh, project, uh, we need to uh, web scrape or get data, right? D data is not that ready readily available. But luckily uh, for us uh, to train our model, uh, we we used a data set from the University of Victoria. Uh, they had uh, they had the data uh, from over six. 45,000 columns uh, and rows, so 45,000 entries, which is a huge data set. Um, yeah, so we we used that, uh, and we also used another data set from Kegel. Um, yeah, so combined, we had over 65,000 rows, uh, which we used to, to train our model. And remember, uh, Hiro was talking about merging the two data frames. Like that's what that's exactly what we also did. Uh, so, but the thing is, you see here, this was, uh, if you can see my cursor, you guys can see my cursor, right? Okay. All right. Thanks for confirming. Kyra. Okay. So this was basically, I think, from the University of Victoria data set. And this was how our data set was from the Kegel. And as you see, some of them don't exist. Like um, some have, uh, one of the data, data frames had subject. But the other, uh, the other data frame had, I uh, didn't have subject, but it had uh, maybe the date or the author. And this was a, this was kind of a problem for us because machine learning models usually uh, like numbers. Okay, they they like numbers and they don't like NAs. You see here NANs. These NANs mean that there's no data available, so it's a, a blank space. And uh, usually machine learning models don't like this. Uh, so usually what we do is we drop the whole row uh, of NANs. But if we drop all the ones with NANs, then we all, we're only left with either one of the data sets because one, one of them doesn't, don't have their columns, right? So what we did was we found out that only title and text, uh, which is here, the title and a text uh, for both the data sets were the same. So we just deleted all the other columns. Uh, and we just merged the whole data set to make a huge 65,000 row data set of tiles and text. Yeah, so that's how we first uh, got our data. And then we used NLP. So NLP is natural language processing. Natural language processing, I think I can write here. Okay. Um, oh yeah, okay. So before I go to natural language processing, I want to go back to Jovian, right? So. Cool thing about Jovian is that I can, you know, I, I can send you this link and you guys can take a look at this, right? And uh, take a look at this Jupyter notebook. And now uh, you can also run it. So I can just press run and run on binder, right? And then when you press run on binder, it's going to prepare my Jupyter notebook. And yeah, it's gonna take just two, two seconds. Let me run this too. Um, because I don't want to run the whole thing here. Yeah, I'm going to run that so it'll keep going. I'm going to show that later. Yeah, so a little short wait. Um, yeah, I don't think I can write here. That's the thing. Um, let's go back here. Can I write? No, I cannot. OK. Yeah, OK. Let, let, um, it's OK. I'll just open a small. Basically, uh, I'll just explain NLP really, really, uh, uh, really, really quickly. So basically, a uh, rule of thumb is that whenever you want to uh, train a machine learning model, you have to always remember that these machine learning models only like numbers. They don't like words. They don't like any strings, no characters. They, they don't like all that. They only deal with numbers. So how would you... Um, feed the machine learning model 
words. Uh, you would say, oh yeah, I can use ASCII. ASCII is a good way to feed um, numbers to machine learning models. Well, let's take a look. Let's say you have the word listen, right? So listen, and L has a different ASCII value. I has a different ASCII value, S-T-E-N, right? They, have, they all have different ASCII values. And let's say they add up to about some, some number, right? Okay, now let's say silent. Did I spell that right? Yeah. Silent has the same <laughs> letters in it, and it's gonna read the same thing. So it's gonna have the same number, right? So it, the machine learning model can't tell the difference between listen and silent, and clearly they're not the same thing, right? So this is why we have um, we have NLP that exists and natural language processing. Uh, we use uh, a bag of words. So what what this is is that let's say um, let's have a sentence, right? I love dogs. Okay, no, no, no not I love dogs. Uh, uh, I really love dogs. Right? Okay. So. Now let's say, uh, okay, so what, what, what this does is it has a number for each and every word. So let's say I has one, okay? The word, uh, the word I has a one. Uh, the word really has a two, okay? The word love has a three and the word dog has four, right? These are just random values. Like I can also say, um, I, ha I, I, I don't know what the real numbers are uh, in, um, in the dictionary, uh, but let's just consider one, two, and three for simplicity, okay? But they have specific numbers. So now, uh, one, two, and three is, uh, one, two, three, four is fed into the model, right? So now that's how it's able to tell the difference. Now, how does it know the difference between nouns, pronouns, adjectives, and all that? It's also fed into the dictionary, but it can also tell the difference like this. Let, let's say I say, I really love cats, right? Now, what is it gonna do? I already had a number one, so it's gonna write one, right? Really had number two, remember? Really was stored as two. Love was three, according to the dictionary. And cats, cats might be five, right? So now, just looking at the numbers, what can you say? Oh yeah, these three words are the same, in both sentences, but this word is different. So this might be a noun, something like that, right? So this is basically how machine learning model would look at these set of numbers. And this is this is basically what NLP is. So uh, the only difference is that we, uh, we, we use this dictionary of oh, thousands and uh, yeah, thousands of words which have their own numbers, designated numbers. So, NLP, right? Uh, first, what well, first what did we do? We did uh, something called removing punctuations and stop words. So again, you can't uh, and you, yeah, you can't have uh, punctuations and stop words in NLP. So we what we did was we completely removed all the punctuations and stop words. And the small function that does that, uh, it goes through each and every line and uh, like l l let's say. Um, yeah, it, it just removes all these, all the punctuations. That, that's, that's basically it. Um, and yeah, now we use something called the bag of words model. Now, all we do is we just fit the bag of words model, okay, to this corpus, okay? We just put the corpus in and we put it in account vectorizer, okay? And we, we fit transform here, and then we store in this variable called x. So we're, all we're doing here is we're training the bag of words model. Then what we're doing is we're splitting it into X train, X test, Y train, Y test, right? And we're uh, at our test size is 0 0.033. So what we're, what we're basically doing here is we're just splitting the uh, splitting our uh, test data, uh, sorry, uh, splitting our whole data into train and test sets, right? And we're, we're putting this random state as zero so we can recall that uh, random state Be because whenever a model is uh, given some random rows and columns, 
uh, we, if we want to retrain it on those same rows and columns, it stores that randomness as zero. So yeah, uh, that's why we, uh, we give it a value here so we can recall it later. So we used two models, uh, actually three. Uh, yeah, three, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you the third one. So multinomial and naive based algorithm, uh, which is a which is also uh, which is a classifier. So this is this is basically just straightforward stuff. We're just fitting our X train and Y train uh, into the model. Okay, we're just training the model. Okay, so just for simplicity, we're training the model, and this is our result. So uh, this model, the multinomial naive base algorithm, or naive by no yeah naive base algorithm, um, got, got an accuracy of eighty five percent, eighty five point three percent. It's not bad. Uh, and this is a confusion matrix. Remember, uh, I showed you a function on top. Uh, this this was to like prettyfy the function. Okay, and um, this is the this number of uh, true positives and true negatives and uh, of the uh, and how the model did basically. And these are our scores. So remember the output function on top. So we just call that output function, and then that output function just uh, displays all the scores really neatly. That's why I just used that function. Um, so this uh, recall score uh, was 81%. Accuracy score was 85%. Um, F1 score was 84%. And ROC area under curve, uh, A AUC score was 80, uh, 85%. Um, and moving on, we used another algorithm called passive aggressive classifier algorithm. Uh, and same thing here, you see, uh, we, we do the same stuff, same stuff, but we just change. What do we change? We change the algorithm. So we're, we're just doing that. You see, machine learning is so simple, guys. Machine learning is so simple. You just fit the model and then voila, accuracy. You got 85% accuracy. Hey, this was better than the one before by point zero, no, 0 0.2, which is a lot, guys. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, and this is uh, this is the confusion matrix, um, matrix that we have, and these are the uh, true positives and true negatives. And here, the recall, uh, this is a recall accuracy, F1 score and AUC score. And this was by far the best algorithm that worked, <laughs> that we trained. Uh, uh, fun fact, uh, actually, this algorithm's accuracy was zero point, uh, sorry, it, it, it was actually 91% uh, when we first tried it. Uh, five hours before we had to submit our uh, hackathon project, I accidentally, um, yeah, I, I accidentally restarted kernel. Uh, people who have uh, people who have done machine learning know how big of a thing this is, especially when you have a really, really bad GPU on your system. <laughs> so the yeah, IRA is laughing. So the thing is, uh, here, I, I'll show you the step, right? Believe it or not, this step, no, actually, this step and this step together took 25 minutes to run. 25. Yeah, you heard it right. 25 minutes to run. And uh, yeah, so it's a pain uh, to run it again, especially when you had a really good accuracy score. And look what happened. Our accuracy dropped. I don't know why. Don't ask me why. We didn't go through the details on how it uh, how it went down to 85, but it still performed well. That's uh, as a thing. So, uh, multi. Uh, so this is a third model that we did. Uh, so we used multinomial classifier with hyperparameter tuning. Uh, so um, this model actually has different alpha scores uh, that it uses. So for each alpha score, it has a different accuracy score. Sorry, for each alpha number, it has a different accuracy score. And uh, we figured out that, uh, what did we figure out, dude? Yeah, we figured out that this was the best one. I might be, I might be not saying the right one here, but yeah, is this the biggest number here, guys? That's all. Um, yeah, th uh, that alpha score uh, performed uh, the best. So yeah, uh, but we didn't use this uh, due to the complexity. Uh, we just didn't want to show it in our presentation. So we finally used this, which performed really great, guys. And don't worry, guys, I, 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 that might be really boring, boring, but uh, we'll, we'll get to the fun stuff. I'll, I'll, I'll ask some uh, news websites from you guys. So yeah, uh, save, okay, so, so now we saved our best working algorithm uh, using something called Pickle. <laughs> okay, so 
pickle um uh, basically is this uh, tool, uh, tool to save your uh, algorithms, uh, sorry, your models that perform well. So you see here, we trained our model and we got uh, an 85% accuracy. Now we want to use that model, right? Because uh, it's already trained. So it's like a baby, you teach it something and now you're testing it or you want to use that, use the knowledge it learned and predict stuff, right? So that's why we want machine learning. So um, we save the file. Uh, right, we store in a .pkl file. I named it PAC, pack, uh, because it was a passive aggressive classifier. Uh, and I, yeah, and this is this is just uh, loading it. So yeah, this is this is nothing. And then you see the count vectorizer. Remember this this little devil, um, which took 20, uh, 26 minutes to run. Yeah, I stored that one too because I didn't want to uh, keep running it twenty six uh, for for twenty six minutes each and every time you want to run a run a model, right? So I, I stored that using pickle as well as just an array uh, count vectorizer. And uh, lastly, this is some rough work. And then lastly, I just so what I did uh, was I just built a function, right? And that function, what it does is if you give it some title or text, it just takes the title, it takes the text. Remember the um, uh, the removing the stop word things? So yeah, uh, it removes all the stop words there. And then finally, uh, it what it what it does is it uh, it just feeds it into the model. It, it transforms, use the CV, right? And then it says it predicts using the model that we gave it, so dot predict. And then it prints output, yeah. Really simple. So uh, let's now go to the fun stuff. Um, I don't know if I can run this here. Yes, I can. Oh, oh, oh. Whew. Okay, guys, don't you don't like to see that? Uh, so let me just uh, stop my share really quickly. I will. Sorry for the delay, guys. I will quickly open it in Jupyter Notebooks. So we can see it in action. Yeah, by the way, uh, guys, if you have um, any news that you want to see if it's fake or not, send it in the chat really quickly. Uh, any URL, guys, any URL, I'm dead serious. Uh, send, send me anything that you think is fake. Um, maybe, maybe you believe that Bigfoot exists, right? Try to find me a news article on that. And let's see if our model thinks it's fake or not. So fun stuff here, guys. Uh, send me URLs in the chat. Ooh, nice. Okay. This has got to be fake. Okay, let's see, Busher. Let's see. Um, opening up my stuff. Uh, fake news, yes. Uh, fake news. Okay, guys. Guys are making me nervous. You know, sometimes um, when a machine learning model um, doesn't like, but when you train your own machine learning model, it's like you train your own baby. If it fails, you'll feel so bad. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, ooh, I got really okay. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, I am ready. Let's see how this works, guys. Okay. Um. Okay. Whoa, we got a lot. We got a lot. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the only thing is, guys, I will tell you. Um, whoa, let me fix this. Yeah. The only thing is, I'll have to do the painstaking effort of copying and pasting the text because the URL right now, the web scraper is not working, sadly. So, yeah. So, I enter the title right in front of you guys, and I think this is what oh this is what Busher sent, correct? Uh, okay, and then copy some text, uh, paste it in there, and then let's see, fake news detected, guys. That was fake. So, um, where was the chat? I can't find the chat. Okay, yeah, so. Um, Busher, yeah, it is fake. Uh, okay, next one. This is from 
Nathan. Okay, let's see. Okay. Um, let's go and run it again. Okay, let's run the same. We're just running this function, guys. We're just running this function over and over again. Okay, that's what I'm doing. I'm just copying the title. Okay, and then we're going to copy the text. Right, and real news detected, huh? So apparently this is real, Nathan. Interesting. Okay, I don't know how real or how fake that is, but according to the model, it says it's real. Okay, moving on. Next one, Nabir, uh, GME stock. Oh, oh, whoa. Okay, um, I'm gonna run this again. Um, okay, and then I'm gonna run some text through. Um, let's see. Um, can I copy this whole thing? Oh, no, it's showing pictures. Let's do this, right? Let's get a notepad. And let's just paste all this in. Yeah, I think that should be enough. Right. Okay. Oh, whoa. I'm just control A, control C. And then I'm just gonna put that in there. Real news detected. So this was basically real. Um and who put this in? Um Okay, uh so Nabir. Uh, that was real, according to the model. I don't know. Uh, scary hot. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, conf okay, so this is the last one, I think. Uh, right? Last one that you guys gave. Okay. Um, so okay. last one <laughs> nice okay uh copy that and real news detected huh interesting so um yeah i hope you got all your answers right mm-hmm uh, so yeah, I, I, I don't think I can see it. Okay, yeah, so any more guys you want to, any more questions you guys have, uh, let me know. Uh, now it's time for questions. Thank you so much for attending our Let's Talk today. Um, this is basically uh, what we did for our hackathons and we thought it would be great to share uh, with you guys. Uh, hopefully you guys learned something today. Uh, yeah, and let us know. I mean, uh, let, let me know how our model did. Oh yeah, and almost forgot, uh, Rohit um, also uh, worked on, on this project. And uh, Ro Rohit, would you like to say something about our uh, about your about the project and uh, what your um, how your experience was? And because you know, your ex uh, sharing your experience would really help uh, some people over here. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, as a beginner to um, machine learning, like I didn't know really anything. Uh, coming into this, but I think what I took uh, learn from this experience was that like it takes it takes some time to learn about new things, and I think there's a lot of research that needs to be done before you attempt a, like a high level project like this. But if you're a new like if you're a beginner, and if you have people that are experienced that you that you're working alongside with, I think there's nothing to worry about. And you know like people like Bardwaj and I work with uh, Karthik as yep. well, mm -hmm. and uh, they're really good teachers. So I think um, one thing you got to take away from it is that, um, yes, it can be a bit difficult at first just to learn terminology, but yeah, like I said, cleaning the data is honestly like, there's <laughs> a lot of code for that. And I, and I, and I learned, I'm like, wow, I thought cleaning the data would be easy, you know, in the beginning, but yeah, I just learned a lot just from like, just literally just seeing the code, like seeing the code, I think, like if someone were to like tell you step by step, like, oh, this this part of the code does this, this part of the code does that. 
you'll think it's actually pretty easy. You'll be like, wow, why didn't I think of that? You know, some <laughs> of the algorithms, you're like, wow, that actually looks really easy. But it does take uh, some time and effort to like do it like on your own and stuff. So yeah, I definitely have to credit Bardwaj and the whole team really for the machine learning part. Yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, and we did this through Figma. Um, oh yeah, so. uh, we also have a Figma model that mm -hmm. uh, I'd, I'd also like to uh, show uh, here. So yeah, if you see the demo, uh, I'll, I, I don't know if you guys can hear the sound, but yeah. So this is how our wireframe would have looked, right? And this is how, this is what um, uh, we, we like really worked on really hard. Um, yeah, so forgot to show this. Yeah, see that? So yeah, that's what Rhodes was talking about. Yeah, and uh, yeah, the Figma part was, you know, if you compare the Figma part to the machine learning part, I'll take the Figma part any day because it's so much easier. But <laughs> yeah, uh, the Figma part, it just really helps you basically focus on the design part. That's pretty much mm -hmm. it. And yeah, I think now Bardwell was talking about using, like using a web, uh, web scraper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and getting it to an actual web application that that's um, that's a big step. So, but if we yeah. or if um, that happens really smoothly, then this project like it becomes even way better. Like it just goes into a next level. <laughs> so yeah, I'm I'm really excited to work with that as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. Those are, yep, those are my yeah, thoughts. Thank you so much, Rod. Yeah, thank you yeah. so much uh, for your uh, experience, uh, sharing your experience. Yeah, and. Uh, yeah, so any other questions, guys? Uh, you have any questions or you want to test the model a little more? Uh, you can send some stuff on the chat. <laughs> oh, okay. So I got onion, uh, the onion news wrong, huh? Actually, let's test it again now. Um, I'd like to see how it got it wrong. Now I feel bad. Oh no. Machine learning model did, did it wrong. Okay, let's 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 do it again. Um, re retest it. And we'll see how it goes. Okay. Let's retest this. Um, still says real news. So. Yeah, a um, little more work to be done. <laughs> yeah, uh, so yeah, uh, that's that's how it is so far. And I should always uh, mention again, it's only 85% accurate. So yeah, <laughs> not 100%, but we'll get there soon. Yeah, so any thoughts, Hyro, on today's session? Oh, I can't hear you, Hiro. Kid, really cool project. I learned a lot from you, so. Oh, no, dude. I have to that. Learn about it. Yeah, <laughs> your project as well, dude. Mm -hmm. Yeah, guys. Oh, uh, for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah, thank you so much, you guys, for attending today's Let's Talk event. Um, any other questions anyone has? Let me know. And, uh, for YouTube, this is it. Yeah, thank you so much, guys. Thank you for watching. So yeah, subscribe. <laughs> Love saying subscribe, dude.